In this week's Blizz Planet Weekly, BlizzCon tickets go on sale later this month, while WoW Patch 5.3 hits the PTR, Jay Wilson thinks the auction house hurt Diablo 3, and Blizzard makes a huge esports announcement, and what does that mean for the future of esports? Hey everybody, welcome to the newest episode of Blizz Planet Weekly. As always, I'm your host, all scruffy but still beer-tastic, Chris Arnone. So first off, let's talk BlizzCon, all right? It's coming up November 8th and 9th this year. We're going to try real hard to be there. More on that later. But the big news is we now know when the tickets are going on sale, all right? It's coming up later this month. Now, we're expecting a massive, just huge BlizzCon, all right? Things we know we're going to see there. We're going to see these new global finals for the WCS. We're going to talk, once again, more about that later. Hearthstone, Heroes of Warcraft, uh, Blizzard All-Stars, things we might see there. Maybe the next-gen MMO, codenamed Titan. What about the next World of Warcraft expansion, Diablo 3 expansion, or that next StarCraft 2 expansion? What about the Warcraft movie? All of these things are possibly on the table. It's just a ton, ton of stuff that we can, we're going to potentially see. Here's the information you really want to know, though. Tickets are going to go on sale $175 ahead, 7 p.m. Pacific Daylight Time on April 24th. They will again go on sale, so there's going to be two different batches at 10 a.m. Pacific Daylight Time on April 27th. So, as always, a weekday and a weekend, so you get both shots at that. Now, they will go crazy fast, so pay attention to those times and make sure you are ready and willing to buy your tickets at those times, because in years past, they sell out in minutes. Now, they're also doing a benefit dinner that costs $500. It also includes your ticket to BlizzCon. It's going to go toward a charity, uh, and those are going to go on sale 7 a.m. Pacific Daylight Time on May 1st, uh, but a very limited number of those. So, very excited. Lots of hype, lots of cool stuff going on. Now, we want to go to BlizzCon. We're talking like four people, all right? Myself, JR, Paul, who does our filming, uh, JR, who, well, right now, fiance, who will be his wife at that time, you know, we're just going to need all hands on deck to cover this amazing event. So much going on, so much we're going to want to tell you about. But we're kind of trying to kick the tires on what we're going to do, all right? When we went to MLG last year, we used Chip-In. Chip-In doesn't exist anymore. And we have some stuff, some cool swag, some awesome things. And we would love to do like, you know, donate some money and for every five or ten dollars you spend, you get a sort of ticket for a raffle, but that would go against PayPal's user agreements. So we're trying to find some ideas, some some cool ideas that we can do to where you guys can donate us some money and we can give away some cool stuff for every so much that's spent. You know, that's what we're looking to do. So if you got some ideas, some websites out there, some cool ways of doing this, throw those down in the comments. We're trying to sort of crowdsource this idea engine and get it going. Now, let's talk Project Titan. Now, the rumor mill is starting to turn higher and higher right now. There's a website that just came out called Titan Focus. Claims it has a pretty big leak of information regarding the game. Now, keep in mind, all of this completely unconfirmed. Blizzard is, their lips are sealed shut. They're not saying a word about this. This could all be absolute bullshit. But, it's always fun to speculate, right? So here's the things that they say they know about Titan. All right, they say it's based on Earth's history. It's going to heavily involve time travel. Uh, the weapons will range from magic all the way to guns. The graphics are going to be in the sort of established Blizzard style. It's going to be designed with eSports in mind. And currently about 150 developers are working on the game. Another kicker, Jay Wilson was recently added to that team. Now, more pieces of information. Hopefully these are true. A teaser trailer will be debuted at BlizzCon 2013. I don't put it past them. It seems every time there's a BlizzCon, there is some major announcement that goes on, some big thing, some big reveal, so it wouldn't surprise me. And they're aiming for an alpha stage to begin Q1 2014. Now, I've got to reiterate, this could be absolute and total bullshit. It's pure speculation right now. There's no way to confirm or deny this stuff unless you actually, you know, work for Blizzard and are sitting behind, you know, NDAs that would cause your life to be, you know, sued off if you said anything. Uh, but... Hey, hopefully some of this is true, and hopefully, you know, stuff, some stuff about Titan is even better than this speculation. Uh, now, some of this makes sense, like the eSports focus. More and more, everything we see coming out of Blizzard, eSports is growing. It's getting huge. It's furthering their brands. And it would make total sense for them to find a way to make an MMO that has eSports in mind. 
Uh, you know, but this could be completely off base. It could be total bullshit. It could be something more like My Little Pony Online Adventures. Now, JR would play it, but I'm really not sure who else would. So, we want to know your thoughts on this, though. Uh, which of these details do you think might be true? Which do you think are complete and total crap? Uh, what things are you hoping for with Titan? Let us know down in the comments, all right? We love, love your comments. Finally, let's talk World of Warcraft. Here's the beef. So first off, April 1st came and went, and nary a prank or joke did come, at least related to World of Warcraft or Diablo 3. Uh, and of course, people on the internet started getting all pissed off and mad that there was a lack of jokes, which is pretty funny considering that most years, people bitch and moan about them making too many jokes, but, yeah, t t you know, what does it for some doesn't do it for others. Uh, community manager Zarim made a statement on why. They basically said they had some plans, they didn't really pan out, they were busy with the community, and the web team has been with Diablo 3 on consoles, PAX East, the Hearthstone reveal, and uh, the event restructuring of WCS. So they just really didn't have time to put together a good, you know, prank, joke kind of thing. Uh, now, people are starting to take this out of context as well. You know, the internet, y'all just get butt hurt for no reason. They're saying that Blizzard it just wasn't working hard enough in years past and making all this, you know, other bullshit. All right, if you want funny, come watch me. Get on Facebook and look at all your loser friends. The funny is everywhere. It doesn't need to come from Blizzard every year. Uh, you know, the internet becomes completely useless every April 1st. There's always funny stuff. Bacon scope. Seriously, make that shit. I would buy it. All right. Patch 5.3 hits the PTR. Now, we didn't do a filming last week. We did a little webcast, a little discussion. We were talking Hearthstone. We were also talking Diablo 3 on consoles. So we didn't do a full filming. However, over a week ago now, patch 5.3 hit the public test realm. Uh, we were told this was going to come faster than, you know, other others had. And boy, they weren't lying. Just three weeks after patch 5.2. Now, let's take, take a look at what patch 5.3 has brought to the table. Patch 5.3 hit the PTR, and while not all details have been announced yet, some pretty big changes are on their way. The Darkspear trolls, led by Vol'jin, are starting the rebellion against Warchief Garrosh as they begin to advance toward Orgamar. Four new scenarios are being added in the patch, as well as adding new heroic scenarios for pre-made groups where players can try for Raid Finder quality items. Loot specialization has been added to Raid Finder, so you can queue as a DPS, but select you want to win tanking or healing gear for your off-spec and bonus rolls have been changed so that each time you do not win loot, your chances become progressively better the next time, effectively ending those bad luck streaks. There's also a lot yet unveiled in patch 5.3, and with the current rate of the game, we may expect it to hit live in the next six to eight weeks. For more details on the patch, check, the, check out the notes on blissplanet.com. Of me, boy. So everybody was complaining about no prank, no practical joke about World of Warcraft. But StarCraft got one on April 1st. Now what they did is they brought the Warhounds back. Now they were in the beta and were then removed. However, they put them in all three classes and they replaced the workers with Warhounds. So if you got a chance to play StarCraft 2 on April 1st, you got to experience what it was like to have your SCVs. S yes, SCVs, drones, and probes be Warhound workers. Now, JR had a good time with this. He worked up something like 200 Warhound workers and swarmed his opponents with Warhounds. You know, the way StarCraft is supposed to be played. Uh, WCS. Now, this is a huge, huge, huge announcement. Uh, it was done in South Korea earlier this week and involved eSports and the future of Battle.net World Championship Series, WCS. Now, we're going to get into an analysis a little later on in the Blizz Planet Bitch Session, but here's the details. On April 3rd in South Korea, Blizzard announced a partnership with OGN, GOM TV, MLG, ESL, and Twitch TV to form a global league with a point system. The league will be divided into three regions, America, Europe, and Korea, and pro players will be playing for points toward the end of each season. This year, each region will have three seasons. At the end of each season, the top five players of each region will play in a season final event, with the 16th player chosen being from the host region. At the end of the season, the top 16 players in the world will go on to compete at the global finals, which will take place this year at BlizzCon 2013 in Anaheim, California. 
Blizzard has put up a $1.6 million this year in prize money and are making a big push to match what Riot has been doing with their eSports series with League of Legends. Stay a while and listen. So the Game Developers Conference has come and gone. While that's not something we would generally talk about on BlizzPlanet Weekly, Jay Wilson was there and he gave a presentation about design philosophies in Diablo 3. He wanted to talk about what worked and what, well, sucked. Uh, now, one of the failures that Jay admitted to was the auction house, the much bemoaned by many of our fans auction house. Now, they originally intended this to be a service so that people wouldn't have to go through a third-party service. You know, they wanted to reduce fraud, they wanted to give people a safe place to do this. They also only thought a real small percentage of players would use it, much like those third-party auction houses that you were able to find with their previous games. Now, what actually happened was more than 50% of people who play Diablo 3 are using the auction houses. What it's done is it's, for many people, it's replaced the actual item hunt. There's no longer the joy of going and killing Diablo to see what kind of loot he drops. You're just kind of going, well, how valuable is it? I'm going to go and get gold so I can buy the stuff that I really want. I've done it. You've done it. That's just how it works right now. And he really talked about how that, that hurt the game. But there's a problem. Part of it is there's more than 50% of the people using it. They also have no way of telling how much of that 50% are using it because they feel like they have to or use it because they really like it. Now this just goes back to something, if you watched our webcast we did last week, I, I kind of threw it out there and I wasn't really thinking about it at the time, but it really makes more sense as I think about it, is if you were to create separate realms in Diablo 3 with and without the auction house. Let the players sort themselves out. If you want to use the auction house, you go use that. But we know they're going to have to work on rebalancing the game without the auction house for the consoles, so why can't they implement that rebalancing in an auction house free environment on PC? That's just my two cents. But now, let's talk esports again in the Blizz Planet Bitch Session. So the WCS announcement in esports is pretty freaking huge, all right? Now let's talk about why we think it's really good. Now first off, it's gonna create a unified story. Fans can follow players at the beginning of the year all the way through all three seasons and have a ranking and know who is absolutely their number one undisputed player. It's also gonna create some pretty cool drama with this unified story. Imagine a number 15 seed upsetting the number two player. I mean, we're in March Madness right now, right? It gets huge and crazy. You know, people talking about Wichita State. I mean, I'm talking real sports. On the, what, you don't know what I'm talking about. Yes, this is what happens. There's a hierarchy, there's a tournament. People go crazy when a low seed team beats a high seed team. All right, trust me, that's how it works. So imagine that in esports. It could be huge, crazy drama. Uh, it's going to create some regional heroes. Who's number one in America? You know, players, fans can get attached to these local players, these players that represent your country, your region. That's pretty cool. It's also going to create this really cool partnership between these large tournaments. I mean, the fact that you can track who's the best player across all of these different leagues is really cool. It's also going to create some new excitement. Blizzard is putting a lot of money, $1.6 million behind these prizes. The higher and higher that gets, the more buzz, the more, you know, we're going to see mainstream media starting to look at this going, man, there's, you know, these, these guys are really hauling in some cash and people are really, really watching this. It's just going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. It's also going to make things easier to follow. Casual fans will have a better understanding of these rankings, of who is good, and allow them to get more involved. But it's not perfect. Let's talk the bad. Now, right now, any player can choose any region. They just have to do so at the beginning of the year and stay in that through all, all, all three seasons. This means South Koreans who feel like maybe they can't compete against the super awesome high-ranking South Koreans can say that they're going to play in the U.S. or in Europe and get to play in that region. So it could still block out foreigners or non-Koreans out of the tournament and that could that could that could be really hard you know that that takes away that whole grassroots feel that they're trying to go for and currently not all major tournaments are invited to join this partnership currently in particular dreamhack and nasl are not involved with this partnership so they could have a tougher time trying to draw players in you know if they have a tournament at the same time that one of the others that's involved with this partnership is you know, most players are they're going to want to go toward their ranking. They want those points, so it's going to be tough for them. But Blizzard has said that they're willing to work with these other tournaments and maybe award some points. 
And who knows, you know, as time goes on, maybe they'll bring everybody else under their umbrellas as well. But what can we expect going forward? Now, Blizzard seems to be going absolutely all in on esports, and it makes absolute sense. I mean, imagine what StarCraft would be if it weren't for esports. It would just be another strategy game. Instead, it's pretty much the king of strategy games. It's huge. I mean, how many games have a life cycle that lasts as long as the original StarCraft did? And it was because of esports. So absolutely makes sense for them to throw all their cards on the table for this one. Uh, now, last year we talked about this whole grassroots campaign, that they were really wanting to try and do that. And we potentially see this as being a real catalyst to make that happen. We've been pretty excited over the last couple of years um, with esports, and we could just see this getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Plus, imagine next year adding in Hearthstone, Blizzard All-Stars. And if all these rumors are true, 2015, we could also see Titan adding into the mix. So, you know... Blizzard absolutely moving as a force. You know, before, WCS was sort of this afterthought of, oh, we want to get into esports too. Now it seems to me like WCS is going to jump to the forefront of esports for StarCraft 2. But as always, we want to know what your thoughts are. Throw them down in the comments, all right? And of course, you can always check out blizzplanet.com for all the news, reviews, fantastic community, everything you need to know about Blizzard Entertainment games. We'll see you guys next time.